Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to factor this trinomial. And what does it mean to factor? Guys, I'm drilling this because I want you to know. What does it mean to factor something? Make it into a multiplication problem. It is not there yet. It's just an addition problem. So I know it's going to be two binomials, but the process is slightly different. Okay, why is it different? The main reason is because that lead coefficient is not 1. So we're going to use another method called the bridge method. I don't care what you call it, bridge, arch, rainbow method. But the reason we call it one of those is because you're going to take this lead coefficient and multiply it by the constant. So here I'm going to write off to the side 7 times 3. And does anyone know what that is? 21. 21. 21. And that's a key number. That's a very helpful number. Because now I can go through the process we went through on the last trinomials. So here I'm going to put, and I'm not going to do this for long, I'm going to put my two columns. I have factors, not of 3, factors of 21. I want factors of 21 now. Why? Because it's a helpful number and I need it. Okay? And then I'm still going to get the sum of those factors, sum of factors. Okay, so can anyone give me some factors of 21 that add up to be 22? And you guys are getting better, right? 1 and 22. 1 and 20. 1. 1 and 21, right? 1 and 21, and that gets me 22. And that's good. That's what I wanted. But we're not done with the problem once we get that. we got to go through this extended problem, and um, you're going to see that it's kind of like this. You start off with this. Mr. A is going to make it like that. Then he's going to make it like this. And then we're going to get our answer. I'm going to make it kind of difficult seeming, but you have to go through the process to get to your binomials. Okay, ready? After you get the, the two numbers that multiply to get you, um, oh, sorry, that multiply to get you 21 and add them to be that middle coefficient, you're going to do this. You're going to break down this middle term into two terms. Oh, why would I do that? Well, you'll see in a moment. I want you to keep the first term, 7x squared, and keep the last term, positive 3, the same. Leave them alone. They're still good. We're going to use them. But what in the world am I going to break down 22x into? One, one, one. Close. Close. 1, one x and 21x. Write that down before I start explaining you, because you're like, uh, where does that come from? Okay. Do you see where I got the 1 and 21? I got it from over there. Okay, but what is 1x plus 21x? 22x. So I did not change the value. But now what I did is I made it factorable. Ooh. What does it mean to be factorable, you think? Able to be factored or able to be multiplied. But I'm not there yet. Okay, how many terms do I have now? Oh, man. Wait, wasn't it a trinomial to start off with? And now I just made it to a four-term polynomial. I just made it more complicated, didn't I? I mean, I made it four terms instead of three. But the reason I did that is because I'm going to go through a new method called factoring by grouping. All right, how many terms do I have here? Four. I want you to group the first two and the last two. Just underline them. That's what I mean by grouping. Just group them up together. And by the way, guys, when we go through this process, you might be like, wait, what did he do up there? Why did he say that? What did, where to get those numbers? How to get that answer? I'm going to go through this many times. But go ahead. Mm, not yet. Is this a multiplication problem? Not yet. So have I factored anything? What's the? So look at this problem right here. Look at this right here. This is 8 dash 1. What's the GCF of 7x squared and 1x? What's the GCF? 1. X. 1x. It's just 1x. Or I'm just going to put x. Do you guys know what would go in parentheses if I'm just dealing with this? 7x plus 1. Remember you did that on your IXL? That's what you were doing. That's why I wanted you to get practice with that. How did I get these numbers right here? I took the GCF and I divided this one and this one by x. What's 7x squared divided by x? What's 1x divided by x? One. That's how I got it. So it's not like we're just making things up and I just put numbers down. No, that's how I got it. I'm going to erase this because um, it might look confusing about that. All right. What's the GCF of the next group? 
This is GCF of the next group. Just look at that group. Three, positive three to be exact. And if I divide 21x by three, I get seven x. And if I divide three by three, I get plus one. Hmm. Okay, I took a trinomial, made it into a four-term polynomial, and now I have two distributions. I have two distributive property problems in this. But you know what here? I need you to see something. Please see this. Please look up here. If you're not looking up here, you won't see, you won't have a clue why I'm doing this. What's going on between x and 7x plus 1? Okay, distributive property, what basically is going on? They're being multiplied, all right? What's going on between 3 and 7x plus 1? Multiplication. Okay, if these two are being multiplied and these two are being multiplied, do these two have a common factor? Is there something that's being multiplied Seven. here and here? 7x plus, Seven X plus 1. Both of them have this. Is that correct? So, oh man, this is so cool, but I, it's complicated. The GCF of this and this is 7x plus 1. That's the GCF. And you're like, wait, how can you have a binomial be the GCF of something? Is, are both of these being multiplied by 7x plus 1? Yes. So what's left behind? x plus 3. That's your answer right there. Oof. Oh my. Oh my, guys. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's too difficult. And what is this? This is awful. Okay, there we go. That's your answer. 7x plus 1 times x plus 3. Okay. We went through this whole big process, and I don't even know if that's right. I mean, maybe you're thinking they're not whatever. I need you all to use FOIL on this right now. Go FOIL it. I want you to get what does this give me when I FOIL this together? I would write it down. I don't know either. I'm sorry, write it down. It equals the, the original trinomial. Okay, um, go ahead and do it if you haven't finished it, but here's the thing. I had a trinomial. Was there multiplication? Is there multiplication going on in this trinomial? Technically, yeah, but it's not being multiplied. So when I want to factor, what am I trying to do with this addition problem? Make it into a uh, or a multiplication problem, which in this case would be solved by FOIL. What'd you get when you FOILed it? 7x squared plus 22x plus 3. There you go. You got it. Yes, sir. Where did you wait? So you circled. 7x plus mm -hmm. 1. Oh, yeah, just to emphasize it. That's not my answer, but yeah, yeah, I did. Where did you get the 7x plus 1 and the x plus 3? Okay, the 7x plus 1 was circled twice, so here and here you had 7x plus 1. And then where did that x plus 3 go? What did I not circle? x plus 3. That's the next binomial, which is nice. That's tough. I, I get it. I get binomials. I get it's sixth hour. I get you're tired. I get my voice isn't the greatest. Your voice is very cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move on before I get in trouble. All right, let's go. I'll write this one down. And um, it's funny because my wife and I were talking. We So my uh, father and mother-in-law are in town, and they're helping us out to watch the boys while I'm working. My wife's recovering. And um, so they told us last night, do you guys want to go out and get some ice cream or coffee? I'm like, yep. So we left. We're like, they took care of the kids. We took ice Naomi. Cream. Huh? Yeah, so what did I get? I oh, there you go. Awesome. There we go. Um, so we went out, and we, we got it, and my wife and I were talking, and uh, we're like, you know what? We're just going to be tired a lot of the time. I'm like, yeah, I remember with Ezra, he did not go to sleep. Like, we kept looking up how many hours does a baby need to sleep, and it, it's like, 16, 18 hours, he would get like 10, 11, maybe. And so we're like, my wife and I, we were just like, I felt like the first three months of Ezra's life was a giant blur and a long day. It's just this long day where we're just like tired, he's crying, he's always grumpy, and we never knew why. He was colicky. 
with uh, Naomi, she's not, she's really not that bad at all. But I still wake up every three hours, and I'm waking up, and I hear, you know, she's giving her like, come feed me, I'm changing. And she, she's opinionated with that, and I'm glad. But Miss Ray is starting to fade out a little bit. I'm like, I didn't think I'd be this tired, but I am. So if you guys can keep praying for me, because by Friday, I might not be able to say anything to you guys. It might be just... Yes. It's called sleep and how many hours I need. Yes. Uh, but God's been good. God's been good. Oh, my. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm glad you don't make those decisions. Who killed the baby? All right. Quiet. Uh, let's go here with the, the bridge method. Is this a trinomial? Is it in standard form? Yes. Does the lead co is the lead coefficient one? No. no. So we can't just do those two binomials real quick. We're going to use the bridge method. Okay. So what's nine times negative eleven? Okay. So I write negative ninety nine there. That's my that's the key number there. What two factors of negative ninety nine add up to be positive thirty? So factors. I'm going to write this one more time up here of negative 99, and then I want the sum of those factors. Sorry. 33 times negative 3. All right, what's 33 times negative 3? Negative 99, that checks. What's 33 plus negative 3? It's 30, it checks. So that's it. Um, so yeah, and sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not so uh, easy. Like, would it... Technically, wouldn't 9 times negative 11 work here? But what's 9 plus negative 11? There's 12. How long has he been doing that? Like 15 minutes. It was attractive to people. Anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know why soul does it. But anyway, uh, are you guys okay with these two being it? Okay, I'm going to use those to break down the middle term. Shh. Sorry, because we got to get moving. A 9y squared. And negative 11, we're going to keep them the same. Don't change those. But what does the middle term get broken down into? Plus, uh, minus, minus yep, and they have to have the y on both of them. Does anyone know why these two have to have y? Okay, yeah, what's negative, excuse me, what's 33y minus 3y? 30y. If you don't put the y's, you get positive 30, but that's not positive 30 Y. Could you switch these? That's the only thing you could do. Tell me another number and I'll try it. Yeah, you have to get the factors of negative 99 that add up to be 30. But here's your variety. You have to have these two numbers, but these can be flip-flopped. These two can be switched, but these are the only two numbers I can use. And um, I'll show you on another problem how that works. Okay, we're going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to look at this group, and you tell me what's the GCF of this group. What's the GCF of that group? 3y. 3y, yep. So what you're doing now with these two is dividing both of these by 3y. So what's 9y squared divided by 3y? 3y. What's 33y divided by 3y? Positive 11. So you just factored it out. You get the GCF. That's 8-1. This is what you did. Okay? You're going to do it again. But I told you this as we were grading our homework. Remember when the... So this is your second group. Remember when your first term is negative, what do you tend to factor out? Factor out a negative. So what's the GCF of these two? Okay, good. Negative one. Yeah, negative one. Negative one is what I factor out. Okay? Now, what goes in these parentheses? What's negative 3y divided by negative one? 3y. Good. Positive 3y. And what's negative 11 divided by negative one? 11. Positive 11. And looky, looky here. What do we have in common now? 3y. Uh, say... 3y plus 11. They both have 3y plus 11. So guess what can factor out again? 3y plus 11. But what gets left in the other? 3y minus 1. And that is your 
set of binomials. Um, because that negative 99 is going to tell us what two factors to look for, and those two factors are what you're going to break down the middle term into. I know it seems kind of like scattered, like where these numbers come from. And some people have claimed in my years of teaching this that they hate the bridge method. And they don't like it because it's too long and it doesn't always work. Now, if it didn't work and you did everything correctly, it's because the numbers are prime. Like you can't deal with it and that, that happens. But it always works. Always. <laughs> yes, sir. What's the point of all this if we already have the answer? We're literally just getting the exact same number. Well, also, what's the point of this if we already know how to do like, the other version of that? It would take so much incredible time. Where will we use the <laughs> Whoa, three questions. All right. First question was, why do I love this so much? Second question, are there better ways to do this? And third question was, I think, why don't we get more homework? I will answer those today. Okay. But that wasn't our questions, Mr. Sorry, I mixed them up. I'm so sorry. Okay, anyway. Um, here's the thing. This is what they give you guys. This is what they give you here. Your goal in this is what's the title of the lesson? Factoring. You want to make this into a multiplication problem. And I, it's not here, but let me just look it up. I think it's chapter I think it's chapter 12. When you can factor, you can make problems easier. Yep, chapter 12, rational expressions. You're going to be able to make problems easier because you're going to find common factors. And what's any common factor over itself going to equal? One. 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 And you like one more than you thought. But that's later. Okay. Uh, let's, oh, let's just go to the next problem. Go ahead and do this one here. Um, I'm going to walk you through it a little bit quicker. And hopefully you're starting to get the steps. Are there a lot of steps? Yes. Are they a little bit different? Yes. What does it take to get better at them? Practice. Practice. All right. There you go. I know. Trust me, the male teachers are practicing for something coming up at the end of this week. Um, are you actually practicing for that? What do you mean? Is that funny or not? Yeah. Uh, no, we are not practicing. We are just thinking about it. No, no. I'm, just, I'm, I'm excited about it, but I wish it was longer. I wish it was like a whole game so that I can really get injured and regret it for the rest of the year. But that's okay. No. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to play, but... You need to shoot a half-court shot. Like, first shot of the game, just shoot it. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, that's what I did when we had a summon for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Your first step, is this a trinomial in standard form? Yes. Is the lead coefficient one? Nope. So we're going to go with the bridge method, and we're going to get... Negative 12. Negative 12. Okay, what two factors of negative 12 add up to be positive 11? 12 and negative 1. 12 and negative 1. Some of you are getting good at that because you've done it so many times. Excellent. Okay, and then they add up to be 11, so that fits our, our columns. So what am I going to break down the middle term into? Negative 1y and, negative 1y and positive 12y. So... Callie, you're asking, could you have done this? Yeah. We will do that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Either way, uh, some might be a little bit tougher, but it still works out. We'll just do it this way. Sorry if you wrote it the first way and I just switched it up on you. Sorry. Okay, but anyway, grouping the first two and the last two, what's the common factor here? 2y. 2y. You like GCF, don't you? Because if you don't know the GCF, you're done. You're like, I'm stuck. Can't do anything. Done. What's the, um, what's left? Y plus six. six. Y plus six. What did I do to get that? I divided both of these by two Y to get Y plus six. Okay. Second set, be careful. One. Negative one. You don't like that first turn to be negative, so negative one. And then what's left? Y plus six. You know you're on a good track when these two are the same, right? You want to get the same thing in parentheses. Yes, sir. Uh, Max. Do you know, like, how would it, so if I had done this problem, just by myself, yeah, how yeah. would I have known to put the 12 on that side? Because it's not going to be the same. 
you may not have known that. So maybe you did this, right? Sorry, guys, if I erase it, you don't have to erase it. You finish it off because I think you can't. Let's do it this way. What's the common factor here? Oh, uh, sorry, just y. What's left? 2y minus 1. Uh, check me on that. Yes. True? Okay. Common factor here? 6. 2, 1. Uh, 6. <laughs> 6. And then you get 2y minus 1. What's the common factors here? They're not both correct, necessarily. They're the same. What do you mean? Just write it? Like, what, what do you mean by that? No Sorry. So, Jack, did you hear what I, did you see what I did before? Remember, we had this problem flip-flop, didn't we? How many of you kept it, worked it out, got this answer, but flipped? Maybe you got it flipped. Okay. We flipped it because I want to show you it doesn't matter which one you put first, Max. As long as you get that GCF, you should still get the same answer. And it works. Okay. Whew. Almost done. Um. Wait, what? Hey, the thing is, why do it? You can't do it because it's a... Excuse me? What? <laughs> Excuse you? <laughs> you will do it. Ooh, Bridge method. Era. Bridge method. I'm leading you guys to the shortcut. But I want to show you that this bridge method always works. So what's up here? There's a one there. Bridge. Everyone's doing the bridge method. But Mr. A, we could just do the bridge method. But it's like you want us to practice it a lot. Uh-huh. But, 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 I, I, okay. Just do it. Okay. Okay, Jack, what's 1 times negative 20? Uh, negative 20. All right, so we got our negative 20 there. What are two factors of negative 20 that add up to be 1? Right, there's a 1 right there. Negative 20 and nope, never mind. <laughs> 5 and negative 4? That, that gets me 1. That's what I wanted. All right, ready? What do I break down the middle term into? 5n and negative 4n. And again, those can be switched, but you keep the first term and you keep the last term. It doesn't matter how you write those middle two because of, the, because of what property? Community. community property. And the community property will always apply. And I see, guys, we talked about that chapter 1. And I keep stressing out because it helps us. It helps us know you can do it different ways. What's the GCF here? What's the GCF here? Let's start with the first. 1n, I'll just put n. And what's left behind? n plus 5. All right, n plus 5. And then, yes, what comes out? Negative 4 on the second set. And what's left? n plus 5. So what comes out of both of these? n plus 5 times n minus 4. Ta da! Does it work? Always. Mm -hmm. So you see these two are the same, and then you do n minus 4. How many of you are getting the, the bridge method? How many of you realize it works for any of these? Okay. Oh, you, you, for that one, right? Yeah, yeah, I get it. And you can do it, but it works. Your turn. This is all you now. All you. I'm going to put this up here. So you got 3a squared minus 20a plus 12. And you're going to use that bridge method because that's kind of tough. And what I'll do here is I'm going to call on people for each step. So I'll say, what do you do first? All right. What do you do next? What do you get? So I'm calling on you guys for help. And you can look back at previous problems. What do you do after you multiply? 
What do you do when you get those factors? What do you do with that term? What do you do with those pairs? What do you get with those GCFs? What do you get with those common factors? What's your final answer? Sorry, I just gave you step-by-step -step rundown. There's only seven steps to success on this problem. Yes. Would you try? Okay, doesn't work. 12 and 3, uh, doesn't work yet. Excuse me, what? <gasps> so please don't feel like, uh, don't be misguided to thinking that they're always going to be easy ones. Some of them are like, oh man, 2 and 18. Okay, Sydney, what's my first step? Five, three, and twelve, you get thirty. Alright, great. Parker, next step. Next step. Just what do I do next? I don't know, I'm not done. Uh Max, what do I do? Uh, so I got my thirty six. The factor thingy. Uh-huh. What are the go ahead? I think it's, yeah, negative 2 and negative 18, because that gets me 36, and they add up to be negative 20. Okay, great. Cole, what do I do with those? Oh. Oh, that's good. Nice job, Matt. Okay, what do I do next, Brayden? Um, you got to, uh, module, like, background, no, sure. So I just put that. Uh, factor the groups. Uh, what's the first factor in here? 3A times 4 times 6. Times A, A minus, minus 6. Okay. Next group, Josh. Um, you factor out the rest of it. I got negative 2A times 8. Minus 6. Negative 2A times 8. Minus 6. Mm -hmm. And you notice that these two are the same. That's what you want. And Callie, what's my final answer? Um, did you see how they factored out a 3A? So they divide that, divide it here. Did, what's 3A squared divided by 3A? The answer just be A minus 6 times A minus 6. No, no. Remember, these are repeating, so you just take one of them. And then what was left behind? 3A minus 2. Whatever was outside, that gets left. How many of you got that? How many of you did it on your own? Okay, time for some fun. Time for some fun. Fun time Draw that. Um, someone compare this in the last class to Sudoku or Sudoku. Sudoku. And in Punnett squares, it actually is more like Punnett squares, but it is. It's kind of like a a, a logic puzzle, and it and it has one answer here, which is nice. This is our tabular format with the answers filled in. Do you guys remember doing the tabular where you had the two binomials yeah. and you had to multiply to get these? Yeah. Remember, in factoring, good, in factoring, you're not trying to get what's in here, you're trying to get what was out there. So can anyone tell me what, no, sorry, don't tell me, but try to figure it out. And I'll help you out with the first one. Isn't this gonna be 2x and that's gonna be x? Because what's 2x times x? So the, the other thing is one. Yeah. Uh, shh. You figure it out. Sorry, sorry. You figure it out. Sorry, sorry. It's uh, for, what is it? Um, the only thing I'm thinking of is alleles and um, genetics. Genetics, yeah, yeah. Simple, simple genetics. Okay, um... <laughs> How did they get x right here? They had to do 1 times x would give me x, right? Yep. What number goes here? One. Yeah, and I think I wrote like this plus 1. Okay, ready? Does this work? What's 2x times x? 2x times x. What's 1 times x? What's 2x times 1? What's 1 times 1? So you know what your answer to this one would be? 2x plus 1 
times x plus 1. Oh, that's nice. How many of you could do that? Hey, that's what you just did in those problems. Is this easier? Yeah. Yes. 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 So remember, what would this trinomial be? You're like, that's not a trinomial. What happens with these two terms? They combine. So this is trinomial. So it's 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. What would that factor into? Right there. Your turn. No more help. Last one. Sorry, guys. I know it is late and this room's a little stuffy and this is your favorite class, but you're tired. I get it. But just get it done. Here, try your best. Finish it out. <laughs> That's a hard one to say. Me too. What's up? I am. Me too. What's your question? What are you supposed to do? So you're trying to find what binomial goes here, what binomial goes here, and you're like, how do you figure that out? Well, what two things, first of all, are going to get me this? There are, there are a few options to pick. Do you know Manny? Okay, I'm going to ask Manny in just a moment. But how many of you got it? You can check it, by the way, right? You just, just look to see if it works. Did some of you do this? Um, and it's not working for you? Yep, that's me. Oh, because of the commutative property, why don't you do that? All right, Mandy, um, what what do you get for binomials? Um, it's 2x plus 1. I mean, x plus 1. Sorry. And then what's over here? Uh, 2x plus 5. And I'll just put plus 5 like that. Yep, that's it. And it works. It checks. And that's easy. Oh, time out. Yes. Thank you. And I, well, I, what was going to happen was, that's okay. What would happen is we check it. What's 2x times 1? It would give us 2x. So 2x times 3, that works. That works, sir. All right, what's 2x times x? 2x squared. What's 2x times 3? What's x times 5? 5 times 3? So that's, what are your two binomials? x plus 3 times 2x plus 5. So that would have been our answer. Man, if only I could just get at least picture it in my mind like that, and then I could just figure out those numbers. That's a shortcut. If you don't get the shortcuts, okay. Um, we do have time, and I, I really want you to get practice. So please go uh, in your books 209. And um, do number nine. Do number nine, please. Yeah, I don't think we did. Okay, we didn't do it. Be careful. Do the whole process. Number nine on page 209. On the try these. You don't have to. But if you don't get it right, I'll give you more. No, it's a promise. <laughs> Thanks, Will. He gave me that one. Um, I must apologize. We didn't go too much in that one, so I don't want to get... Just do number eight. Number eight. It's harder because of the two variable. I, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Would you add those exponents, though? No, you would have to... What happens... It's not too difficult, but it is tricky with the mind. You just have to think of 6b squared as a constant. So you're going to get 6b times b as, yeah, it gets tricky. Don't worry too much.
Well, I, I might get into that, but probably not. You will get that algebra two. So we're all going into algebra two. Oh. No, yeah, not next year. Most of you won't. Some of you might, but uh, you will eventually get to. Let's ask Mr. Hubbard. Uh, oh. No. No. Um. Um. Geometry is after Algebra One, so you got to go uh, Geometry first. Although I we did Algebra One, then Algebra Two, and in it we had Geometry, so we kind of did it weird in a weird way. Okay, did you write it down? Okay, that times that is that. Okay, what two factors of this number? Oh, we, we went to number eight, so we switched it to number eight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, you can't, number nine is too hard. Did anyone get it? No. Okay, remember, if you don't get, in this case, number eight, I'm going to give you more. Okay, it's hold. And you're like, well, how do you know if you got it, Mr. A? This is kind of stressful. I got it. Check it. Oh, that's right. All right, I'll I'll find out in about a minute. Multiply. The bridge is a multiplication. So it'd be ninety, I think. Yeah, ninety. So 90 is a, obviously a big number, and you know it's not going to be uh, 1 in 90, or 2 in 45, or 3 in 20, or 4 5. Okay, good. Some of you are getting it. All right. Parker, did you get it already? Uh, I'm halfway done. All right, let's get all the way done soon. Mm -hmm. But remember, the at those two with the two groups, the first number should be positive. Or sorry, if it's negative factor or negative out. Okay. Sarah, undo what you just did. Ma'am? So you guys switched the numbers? Are they exactly the same, just switched? Or do they have different signs? If they have different signs, it messes it up. Okay, here's my answer. And if you got it, oh, hold on, hold on. I'll wait. Because I'll give you time to get that next problem. But if you didn't get it. Not really. I mean, I guess you could, but that just... I mean, it could, uh, it's possible, but it's possible, but then things get flipped around and you just gotta flip them back around. Okay, here's your answer for number eight 3x minus 5 times 2x minus 3. Yes! Uh oh, it's time to check. Who got it? Really? Pack up your stuff. No, don't leave it to the bell rings. Bye-bye, Swivel.